Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a mimic or a chest that can spawn an enemy instead of loot. So over here, I'll be interacting with this ACF chest. When I hit E, it's going to spawn a poof sound effect along with a special effect and an enemy instead of getting loot. And you can just replace this. You can do this for the exact same method as a mimic actor. I just don't have any animations or mimic characters. But let's go ahead and get started. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using this Polygon Dungeon Pack provided by Sinti. Uh, amazing packs, and you'll see it in a lot of my tutorials just because it looks nice, as opposed to just using regular Unreal Mannequin. But you can do this with regular Unreal objects, such as cubes and mannequins, and you, whatever asset pack that you want to use, or just default stuff from Unreal. And I'll also be using this Stylized VFX Starter Pack. If you've been coding for more than a couple months, this was a free for the month, so you might actually have this as well. If not, you can skip the uh, Niagara part or the special effects part, or just use stuff that comes with Unreal by default. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to my content folder, right click, create a blueprint class of an actor, and I'm gonna call this something like BP underscore mimic, and double click to open this up. And now what I'm gonna do is create two static meshes. So one will be the um, base chest, and the other static mesh will be something like the top chest part. So I'll just look for a chest and assemble this. You might only need to do this with one treasure chest if you're depending on how your static meshes are. Uh, but for Sinti assets, they do come separately just so you can animate them. And I do, I do like that. So now for the top chest, I'm going to place this on to my chest, make it look like an actual chest, hit compile and save. And now what we want to do is in class settings, we're going to go to interfaces and under implemented interfaces, I'm going to click add and add this ACF interactable interface. And now you'll see on the left side that under interfaces, there'll be a drop down arrow and you can open the ACF. And now you'll have certain options such as on local interactive by pawn, on interactive by pawn, get interactable name, can be interacted, and so on. But before we start that, we're gonna want to go over to our base chest and set up some collisions. Because we wanna make sure that if I were to drag this out into the map right now, if I were to drag this over to the map right now, hit play and try to interact, you're not going to be able to interact with this because it's not set up on for multiple things. So let's go ahead and get, get that fixed. So back in my BP mimic, the first thing I'm going to do is can double click on this function called can be interacted. And I just want to make sure this return value is set to true. The reason why it's not set to true is because ACF makes, makes sure that not everything can be interacted on start. Just because for example, if you're interacting with certain doors, you can require your pawn to get some certain boss keys or check in its inventory if it has a key or something to open a door or a chest and so on. And yeah, but for this one, we don't need anything to interact with it. So I'll just hit return value and make sure this Boolean is set to true by adding this check mark. So now back in the event graph, what I want to do is add this already ACF function available to us called on event on interacted by pawn. So I'll double click to put that in the event graph. And the first thing I want to do is take a snapshot of where my treasure chest is in the world. Basically just get its location because when we destroy the actor, it's going to destroy the location with it. And our character won't be able to reference anything when we spawn a new actor, when we spawn a new actor. So I'm going to go down here, create a variable called location and change this to a vector. And now I'll just drag this and add a set location node and connect this to interacted by pawn. So as soon as he clicks E, we are going to drag this location out and get world location of the base chest. You can do base chest or top chest. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this case just because they're right next to each other. And then after that, we want to destroy the actor. And that's just to make sure the treasure chest disappears off the map because it's not actually going to be a treasure chest. And then if you want to add a special effects in audio, ideally you would want to do that directly after the destroy actor. So I'm just going to spawn a system attached and the reason why I'm doing spawn system attached instead of the cascade one, which is a bit easier to deal with, is just because um, this plugin that we're using, or this uh, asset pack, stylized VFX starter pack, is using Niagara components. So now I'm just going to, I already looked through some of these, so I'm just going to use the P snaking hit 03, just to give it a little portal effect. And now what I can do here is just for the location, I can just get location, and I want to make it a little higher. So what I need to do is just add this plus button into my operator and just click that add operator. And I'm going to want to adjust it on the Z axis. So let me first show you without adjusting it, what it looks like. Go to the base chest and under our collisions, 
we're going to make sure that this block all dynamic is set to custom. And for the type, I want to make sure that the object type is set to pawn. This is just so we can interact with this ourselves and everything else is totally fine. So now you'll see that when I go back to my map and click play, when I go over it, it'll be outlined and it'll have an E button shown on the right in the UI if you are using the ACF sample. So when I hit E, it just got destroyed and didn't actually show my spawn system that I want to do. And it, that might be happening because it's happening underground. So let me just add some height to it. So now for the location, I'll do something like 100 actually. Yeah, 100 on the Z axis just to make it higher. So I want to attach it to a component. And in this case, I'm just going to attach this base component to it. I'll go back to my map and hit play in the editor. And now when I hit E and interact, you're going to see the component gets destroyed and it plays that special effect. So now let's hit escape and let's add a sound. So I downloaded this poof sound from Pixel Bay and you can use whatever sound you want. But pretty much after this, I'm just going to do play sound at location. And then I'll just connect this location as well. And after it plays a sound, I want to spawn an actor. And in this case, I'm just going to spawn an enemy. So the one that I have is the ACF hero female character. And the spawn transform, I'm just going to do something like location plus 100 on the Z axis, just like I did here. So let's go ahead and add that and then connect this to the spawn transform, just like that. And that's pretty much good to go. Now when I hit compile and go back to my editor, I'm just going to hit F11 to maximize it. And when I hit this, you'll see that it destroys, it spawns this character. And I didn't actually hear that sound. Oh, that's because I didn't set anything for the sound. <laughs> so make sure that for the sound you select an asset. So I'll just do this sound. And now for the completed version. Yep, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So it spawns this character who's chasing me down. And it's not actually a chest, just like the player would have thought it would, or what the player thought it was going to be. Get wrecked. One shotted. And yeah, we can go over the blueprints really quick. So when I go to BP Mimic, all we need to, all we have to do is we set the interact by pawn, and we set the collisions of the mesh to be interactable by the pawn by setting the object type to pawn. And then under ACF in the interfaces, when we added this interact interface, we made sure it can be interact is set to true. And now in the event graph, we set the location to get a snapshot of where the treasure chest location is going to be before we destroy this actor. And then we attach it to this base chest component and we tie it to the location and add a hundred on the Z axis just to make it a little higher for this little particle effect, the little purple portal looking effect that it pops out of. And then we added a smoke sound effect where it poofs on that location. And then we spawn our enemy at the very end, selecting the ACF enemy class. And then the spawn transformation is just our location plus 100 on the Z axis. And the reason why I did 100 on the Z axis is because if I just set it to zero or just the normal location on the chest, because it's so low to the ground, there's a chance that the character might fall into the ground. So even if it's clipping a little bit, just like that, and I hit E, it actually, it actually just fell through. It went, it went down. So I just add a 100 or a 150 whatever you like, something that kind of matches where the portal effect is would be nice. But if you do something too high, let's do like 600, for example, then it's going to take some falling damage, probably in shock. And yeah, that's how you create a simple mimic character. Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.